glad you all are with us today, and we're just, it's just a special day, a beautiful day, a day the Lord has made, being with me, so to come to minister the song, and I'm going to share the Word of God with you. We're going to make the, the month of May, uh, we're going to make the month of May uh, preaching on some great women in the Bible. Uh, of course, next Lord's Day is Mother's Day. And then probably we'll shoot, you know, the Sunday after that and, you know, just try to, to go in the flow here and hopefully get back together in, in the house of the Lord together as a church family. And so uh, we, we'll, we'll let you know and keep you posted. One other thing that uh, I need to ask for New Life Ministry folks, um, we, we have had a great success with live stream. And we, we just appreciate everyone that's tuned in to, to be with us. And we really need to get some Wi-Fi at our church. It, it never really dawned on us. We never really required it. But we want to continue this live stream. So if you are a part of New Life Ministry, uh, would you send us a text, Facebook, however you want to do it. Give us a thumbs up that we can go ASAP and get some Wi-Fi at our church building so that we can continue live stream on our regular services. So we really appreciate your cooperation on that. And um, uh, let's just pray together this morning, okay? <clears throat> Dear Lord, uh, you are prayer here in God. We thank you today, Lord, for those times in our life that we were at rock bottom, we're just really struggling, we had a great need in our life, Lord, we're just so grateful uh, that you were there willing to give us a listening ear and help and hear you. Lord, today we thank you for this great day, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your salvation. God, we thank you for the church family, Christians. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to use us all, keep us united, keep us focused on you, Knowing, Lord, that, that nothing we face is bigger than you. That no matter what our world, our nation, whether us individually and our families, Lord, I want to thank you today that you haven't changed, that you still have all power in heaven and earth. And Lord, with you, nothing is impossible. And we magnify your name today with praise, Lord, and we thank you so much for your goodness that you've shown upon us all. Bless those listening today and keep us in your perfect will. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. <coughs> ben and Whitney has done such a great job. And praise the Lord for them ministering to us in the song. We have a great praise and worship team at church and uh, we miss you guys so much, and we look so forward to getting back and getting in full worship mode together and uh, assembling together. So I am just, I'm thrilled to share God's Word with you today. I, I just have one of those inklings that this is a good Word, and definitely somebody's going to get blessed today. <coughs> As I said earlier, I'm going to try to focus on some great women of the Bible for the month of May, thinking, you know, next week is Mother's Day, and um, I tell you, if you search through the scriptures and you, you just look at some biographies of, of great men and women in the Bible, they're so enriching, because so many people in the Bible, I, I will guarantee you, if you read through your Bible, you're going to find somebody that's walking, or that has walked in your shoes, and you're going to draw a lot of encouragement. And that's what I appreciate about the Bible. It's not, it's not a book that hides uh, and covers up sins and failures and disappointments. Uh, there's so much in the scriptures about people's lives that's dirty, that, that you and I would not want anybody to know. But it's there because God's word was written to minister to us. And that's why the Bible will just continue on and on and on through the generation. There's nothing new under the sun. And I'm going to tell you, if there's ever a person in time, in the Word of God, that fits where we are today, it's this lady that I want us to look at together this morning. So I want to give you just a minute, and if you got your Bible with you, 
please turn with me to St. Mark chapter 5. St. Mark chapter 5. And we will begin with verse 25. Mark 5.25. This, this woman has no name. And so if I could title this message, I would title it Daughter. Because she's the only woman in the Bible that Jesus calls daughter. It's a beautiful, beautiful word. And I'm going to tell you, for Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of Lord, to call you his daughter, oh my goodness, that is just so breathtaking. There is nothing more overwhelming. And brothers and sisters, we don't think about this enough, but you take time this week. And if, if, you, if you're a Christian and your faith is in Christ and you've been saved and born again and your sins are forgiven, don't ever take for granted of having the privilege to say, I am a child of God. Oh my goodness, I will tell you, have God as your heavenly Father is the most wonderful, blessed gift that we could have as human beings. And so if you're in Mark 5, 25, this miracle, this lady experiences, a miracle of faith, happens in three phases. And I want to give you those and read through the text and we will just fill in the blanks, okay? The first phase is in verse 25 and 26 that we would call the trial of her faith. Let me read. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. There's a glance at the trial of her faith. The second phase in verse 27 and 28 is the touch of her faith. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, now listen to this, listen to these words of faith. She said, if I could just touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And with that touch of faith comes the third phase of the miracle, the triumph of her faith. Verse 29, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue, uh, actually a better translation for virtue is the word power. Jesus knew power had gone out of him, turned him about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging thee, and you say, You touch me? He looked round about to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, Knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before Jesus and told him all the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Now it's not just bare faith, but her faith in Christ. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace, and you will forever be whole of your plague. Wow. What a miracle. What a transformation. And you know, if, if this story ends good, and it ends with peace, and it ends with joy, and it ends with triumph and victory. But I want to tell you something. For 12 years, did you all that are out there, I mean, here we stand, and we're doing this, but... What we're doing, social distancing, we got this contagious disease and, 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 and all these things going on. This lady lived this kind of 
of life we're living now for 12 years. While the whole world was going on doing its thing, she had to be self-quarantined for 12 years of her life. And I want to tell you, her trial was overwhelming. Her trial, in my eyes, the more I think about this, was just as big as, as Job, who we turn to when we're going through a hard time. But I want to tell you, friends, this lady was physically desperate. She had hemorrhage. She, she was a bleeder and, it, and couldn't stop for 12 long years. And I want to tell you something. That, that was just that physical nagging of day after day after day is just, it's just overwhelming to my mind. You know, I drive for a transport company and we transport a lot of people with dialysis. And sometimes we get a little impatient. We'll pull up at 5 o'clock to pick them up. They've been on the machine for three hours. But then they have to put them in holding to make sure that the bleeding stops. And sometimes we're looking at our watch. It's 5.15. It's 5.30. And we're like, oh, my goodness. And but this woman bled for 12 long years and with no healing in sight. And so physically, she was desperate. And I'm going to tell you, some of you out there, if you've ever had this a physical infirmity or a physical illness or something that, that's hit your body and it just nags you day after day after day, and she didn't have the medications that we have today. And I want to tell you something, friends. She, she, she stood. I heard someone say the other day, and I, I'm just so tired of hearing this word uh, thrown out there because of the times that we're living in and what we're going through that people are committing suicide. I want to tell you something, friend. These people, God bless them, but these people that take their life, they're going to, Jesus is going to pull this woman out in front of them and say, you couldn't take 30 days? This woman took 12 years. And so, friend, if the devil's lying to you and discouraging you and telling you life isn't worth living, turn back to this lady and be encouraged by her stamina and her determination. Socially, she was desperate. She could not marry. She could not have a relationship. She couldn't sit down at the table with her family. She could not have a church family. She couldn't go to a graduation. She could nothing. Absolutely nothing. She was not allowed around one single person. Socially, she was just separated from the world for 12 long years. Think about it, friend. Nobody. Nobody to talk to. No phones in her day. No social media where she could sit down and get ministered to. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Four walls. If she got out in the public, she had to embarrassingly, humiliatingly say, unclean, unclean. And she was telling everybody around her, there's an unclean person in your midst. And people would scatter away from this woman. Oh, my goodness. When you add the physical and social, you can imagine psychologically in her mind what's going on. Because, you see, on top of this, you have this, this crazy... I'm so tired of religious people adding a bunch of stuff to the Word of God. And, and the Jews were horrible about it. I'm not just picking on the Jews, but in those days, they had 11 different cures that they had concocted for this disease that she had. But none of them worked. They just made a lot of money off of it. Also, psychologically, they said she had this disease because at some time in her life she was immoral and got into an immoral relationship. All these crazy things and lies about her on top of her physical and social need. And so probably the psychological factor was overwhelming. And then on top of that, Mark tells us she had suffered many things. Now watch this. It's, it's enough she suffered from this unstoppable bleeding. She suffered also many things from many Physician, quack doctors who would take her money and give her nothing in return. False hope, false promises. 
and she was nothing better. As a matter of fact, Mark says she got worse. So physically, socially, psychologically, now financially, she's rock bottom. Has not been, not been, and she's threw it all away on a bunch of liars who offered her a bunch of just nothing, shallow promises. And you know what? I, I'm going to have to say something here for you. Don't send your stimulus money to some black preachers out here that promise you miracles all the time. I've been in ministry for over 30 plus years. I've been in church all my life. And I want to tell you something. There's a lot of good Christians and a lot of good churches doing the will of God, preaching the gospel, sincere. But there's also a lot, not just TV ministers, but all they're in it for is money, money, money. And they'll take the word of God and lie to you and offer you false promises and false hopes just to get your money so they can live high on the hall. Most of those people are suffering today. So you take the money God blesses you with, and yes, you can. God loves a cheerful giver, but at the same time, please use some common sense and don't fall into the trap of this lady because there's a lot of people who spit all just like her just to have that answer to her problems in life's dilemma. You know, money can buy you a bed, can't buy you sleep. Money can buy you medicines, but it can't buy you health. Money can do a lot of things in this life, and it can pay some bills. And I'm going to tell you what, I've always had the philosophy that if God blesses you, enjoy it. Enjoy what you have. But at the same time, I think we all today know, and God bless this lady, she did it with the sincerity of her heart. And I want to tell you, my dear friends, that's why we're going to show in this miracle. Watch out for so many people. Let me say something here. I don't have any notes today. I'm just going to follow the Lord. You know, when you talk about this lady's social situation, I believe today I'm talking to somebody today. I, I, I think one of the greatest setbacks in the lives of so many people, especially Christians, is those who have been hurt so bad in some kind of social relationship. Because not only do we look for a lot of things financially happiness, but I, I think we're a social driven society, which is okay. But at the same time, let me tell you something. There's people that I'm talking to today who, who can't enjoy your social relationship with God because you've allowed some social relationship with some individual to get between you and the Lord, and you can't even enjoy the Lord because you can't get past this person. You see, friend, this lady is, I mean, her situation is many of our problems today, maybe in different facets. But the last one I want to jar your mind with is this. Adam Lowe. Physically dying, socially dying, psychologically, financially, Mark says she's a rock bottom. But you know what her greatest problem was, friends? Was spiritually, she was lost. I mean, my goodness, on top of all this, she didn't have a relationship with the Lord. But all that's about to change. Hallelujah. And it can change for you because I'm going to tell you something. Let me put it this way. If you have the Lord in your life, you really don't have any problems. If you don't have the Lord, you have the biggest problem that faces humanity. The one of the greatest men of God that ever preached behind the pulpit was A.W. Tozer. And A.W. Tozer said, America's problem, biggest problem, is a God problem. Because you see, when, when you and I are right with God, man, life is just fantastic. But when we're not right with God, nothing works. Nothing works. And so this lady was spiritually undone. And friend, can I say something this morning? Um, nothing matters if you don't know the Lord. Who cares about Wall Street? Who cares about coronavirus? Who cares about reopening? Who cares about anything in life if you're 
not saved. Jesus came to earth to do one thing, to save us from our sins. And hallelujah, one day to take us to a place, glory to God, where the devil will never be, death will never be there, sin will not be there. What a beautiful place. How beautiful heaven must be, sweet home of the happy and free, fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. Man, I'm glad I'm going to heaven. I'm glad Jesus is in my life, and I'm glad that I'm saved. And friend, I want to just remind you that if you're saved today, you ought to take time and just give God so many hallelujahs and praises and thank you for saving your soul. And one day, we'll say goodbye, world, goodbye, darkness, and hello, Lord, and hello, heaven. Mm. She's rock bottom. But, now watch this. Come on, stay with me. Oh, my goodness. This is why this woman just, just grabs us. She didn't stay in a pity. She didn't wallow in the mire of, of despair. She did something about it. She heard about Jesus. And, and you know what I was thinking when I was reading this narrative? I mean, I, it's like if I was her, I would have said, you know what? I've spent all my God on so many. What can this guy do for me? But I don't know who the other unnamed person was in this narrative, but God bless them. She heard the name Jesus. And she heard that when he comes to town, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead are raised up, and he does it without charging a penny. Because she's bankrupt. She has nothing. And so she hears about Jesus. Oh my goodness, I'm getting chills. Let me tell you why. Jesus is coming down the street. He had just been met by this wealthy man in town. And this wealthy man named Jairus said, said my daughter is, is, is dying or dead. And, and, I, and I need you to come to my house. And so Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house. And I mean, just innumerable people crowded him. He could barely see him as he walks his way. And then all these people, then all of a sudden, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings is stopped dead in his tracks. My goodness. He felt this, this divine power. He was God in the flesh, and he just felt power release. Oh my goodness, what was it? It's this little bitty lady who was determined to do something about her problem. She could have stayed mad at God, all kinds of things. I want you to stop and think about what it took. She wasn't supposed to be in the crowd. Her rags, her dirty clothes, her bleeding. She wasn't even supposed to be there. And she was supposed to be yelling and unclean. Well, you can imagine what that would have done. But in her humiliation, in her embarrassment, she sneaks through the crowd and says to herself, if I can just, just, just touch his clothes, this guy, I believe, is going to bring me home. She didn't let the crowd stop her. 10,000 hallelujahs. How many kids, how many teenagers, how many, how many decent people have been led astray and kept from Christ and kept from their miracle because they listened to everybody else and they followed the crowd? Brothers and sisters, there's a time in our life when we need to get along with God. We just need to put, turn the phone off, put, turn the TV off, and get people out of our life and just get be still and know that He is God. Maybe that's part of what God is doing. Maybe God has allowed this thing to come on earth because he's teaching us in a busy, busy, busy world to be still and know that he's God. If anybody needs us, it's churches because we think the busier we are, the more we're doing for the Lord. And that is not true. The strength of the church, said by Ian Bounds, the strength of the church is not how busy it is, but how strong it's devotion to God. Maybe God's slowing us down just to be still, get away from people just to hear from the Lord. The 
crowd, her appearance. She could have said, you know what? Look, I've had these old clothes. I can't go out in public. I can't, I can't face this man. And I'm not going to spend time on that. But the devil will tell you anything to keep you away from the Lord. He's kept so many people out of church from hearing the gospel because, of, because they weren't dressed fancy or dressed right. And I'm going to tell you something, friend. You listen to me. Man looks on the outward appearance. But God sees the heart. And I'm going to tell you, we have misjudged so many people and we've kept so many people away from the Lord because they don't look like us or dress like us or talk like us. We're, we are ridiculous. And I'm going to remind you of our Lord who came and he had a borrowed robe, a borrowed tomb, and a borrowed donkey. And I'm going to tell you something. He came as the most humble servant. Paul tells us in Philippians 2, 5 through 11, that Jesus not only became a man, but Jesus humbled himself to the form of a slave. He was sold for a slave's price of 30 pieces of silver. On the cross, Jesus said, I'm a worm and no man. He was the most humblest person. But let me tell you, when you get humble, God will exalt you. And this humble Jesus is now seated on the throne and he's the king of kings and Lord of lords and he rules the world. And so let me tell you, don't let petty things. Lord, I'm unworthy. Yes, you're unworthy and I'm unworthy. The whole world's unworthy. But he's worth it. God don't measure you by your worth. The only thing, the only reason I'm worth anything right now is because Jesus lives in my heart. There's a lot of other things we could say that would have been big obstacles to keep her from the Lord. But let me tell you something, friend. When your need is great enough, you'll do something about it. And here's what she did when she touched it. If you, if, you, if you can see this, I got my prayer shawl out when Daphne and I went to Israel. And on the four corners of the prayer shawl, this is Jesus would have wore a prayer shawl very often. And on the four corners, north, south, east, and west, no matter where we go, we walk in the will of God. On the four corners were big tassels. The Bible tells us, and you can't see it in the English version, but what she did is she got up behind Jesus and she grabbed this tassel. And you know what? I've, I've heard a lot of commentators and folks say that, that she did that because she was superstitious. And I'm sorry, I totally disagree with that. I think this humble lady was so embarrassed by her situation and her bleeding and her appearance that I don't think there was any superstition in, in, in a prayer shawl. I think she, if she could just set a finger on anything that was attached to this man Christ because it was her faith in him. It wasn't her faith in some handkerchief, some miracle spring water, some ridiculous wooden waters bitch, things that men have made idols out of. Versions of the Bible. Men would take any religious thing and make an idol of it. That's why when God put a snake on a pole, when the Israelites were getting uh, bitten by serpents, God said put a serpent on the pole, which we still have for our medical symbol today. When the miracle was over, if they looked to that, they would be healed. And God told Moses, destroy that or they'll make an idol of it. And people make idols of everything today. And I want to tell you something. It's all about Jesus, a person, him. God's dear son. It's not about denominations and religions and traditions and all this stuff. And just get away from all this stuff and just make it about Jesus. She grabbed that tassel. And as we close, as soon as she acted in faith, God responded. He loves to be trusted. I shall be whole, she said. You know, we need to, I want to encourage you, my dear friends. I want to encourage you to get in the habit. You listen to me, okay? Before I close, faith has to be spoken. Faith is an active thing. If you say unto this mountain, be gone, go into the sea. It'll happen. 
The Bible says to be saved, when you believe on Jesus with all your heart, you confess it. When I was a little boy, when I got saved 14 years old, and Jesus came into my heart, my old pastor, Brother Johnny Martin, had me get in front of everybody. I was like this lady, fair and trembling. But I had a miracle just like she did. But he had to get up in front of everybody and say, Bobby, what did the Lord do? And I, I told him, I confessed it. And when I said it, it just gave me a great confirmation in the heart. Can I, can I tell you something today? Please, I shall be whole, I shall be whole, I shall be whole. Please start speaking faith. The devil is speaking lies. He's speaking despair. He's speaking to me. That's what he wants to do. And I want to tell you, my friends, send a text out of faith. Start speaking. Walk through your house. Walk around your house and speak words of faith. Speak the word of God. I shall be whole. And listen as I close. Mark these in your Bible. Immediately, the fountain of her blood dried up. Immediately. Glory to God. When I was a kid, I seen people on the altar for years, days, months. Revivals would shut down. People would come back next year. And I was a kid. I was like, man, what's going on? God's so hard to get along with. Oh, was I wrong. God said, today's the day of salvation. I'll save you today. God says, now is the accepted time. God was listen, the very second that you trust the Lord, he begins to work. God loves faith. Jesus will stop right there. Just stop. Well, this little bitty woman, nobody knew, nobody cared about knowing, because of the power of faith, God loves to be trusted. He's worthy to be trusted. He will meet my need. Come on, get up and off your couch of despair. Walk around and say, he will meet my need. He will meet my need. Hmm. He not only saves immediately, but he saved her, and you get this word from me. He saved her completely. I have no time, and I know I'm sounding mean, but I don't mean it. But I have no time for these people that say Jesus does a halfway job. And if Jesus gave a parable, he said, if a man's building a house and he stops halfway, people's going to walk by and say, man, that guy don't do good work. He only got halfway. Well, you think God's going to save a man halfway? You say, what do you mean, Brother Bobby? I'm saying God ain't going to save you today and unsave you tomorrow. God ain't going to save you today and then you'll be lost tomorrow. The Bible says in Hebrews 7, 25, that God saves to the utter most. That means completely. Colossians 2, 10. I'm completely in Christ. I've never been lost. Again, never felt like I needed to be saved again because of what Jesus did in my heart was real, genuine, and true. If it was if it come from some other preacher or I did it myself, then I could understand I could lose it. But when God does something, He does it fully, completely, and right. Philippians 1 6. I'm confident in this very thing that He, which have to go a good work in you, will carry it on and perform it and complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 1.12 I know in whom I have believed and I persuade he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. 1 Peter 1.5 that we are kept by the power of God. You say, Bobby, are you giving people an excuse to sin? My goodness, no. I'm just trying to give people a beautiful picture of Jesus and the gospel comes with a warranty and a guarantee that when the Lord saves you and makes you his child, calls you son or calls you daughter. He's going to take you on to heaven, friend. The Bible teaches eternal security. When God does something, he does it completely. Let me just say this and I'll finish. According to the writer of Hebrews, who believed in eternal security, if you could be saved and be lost, you can never be saved again. Do you know why? Because Jesus went to the cross one time. And he died for sins one time and he did it right. He, he made a full
full, perfect redemption for sin. And if you've trusted in His finished work on the cross, then that's enough. Because, see, He ain't coming back to the cross again. Do you understand your salvation? When you trust Jesus, it's anchored in His finished work. You and I can live to be a thousand, and our works will be unfinished. His is finished. Oh, so much I want to say. But I'll close with a couple of thoughts. You all learn as preachers. We'll say, I'm finally, or I'm closing, and then you know we'll have about a good 10, 15 more minutes. Unlike the physicians, Jesus healed her physically, which they could. Jesus' is healing put her back in the social world. They couldn't do that. Psychologically, I can't tell you what's running through her mind. The joy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Financially, this woman now, let me tell you something. She probably ain't going to have no heart. I thought about this. He didn't hand her a check. He didn't give her no money. But I will tell you this. I will promise you, if you ever get to heaven, we have a conversation with her. She's going to tell us, God supply all my needs from that day forward. And he always does. David said, I've been old, for I've been young, and now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seat begging bread. Well, I tell you what, they was probably waiting in line to hire this lady after the news going out on town how Jesus did a miracle in this woman's life. And he didn't charge her a penny. You know, friends, I'm glad salvation is free. I want to thank God for this lady. And I want you to stay with her this week and walk with her. I want you to go in your mind. I want you to just steal away. And I want you to go and I want you to spend a day with her. Why don't you spend 12 years with her? And watch her day after day after day. She made her way to Jesus. And he's the answer after all. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, you know, yeah, we're all having to make some changes. But I'm going to tell you something. For me and you, the real genuine stuff shouldn't have changed at all. We should still be talking to the Lord. We should still be in the Word of God. We should be still be worshiping Jesus, witnessing for Him. Nothing's really changed in our real world. And I want to tell you, my dear friend, if you're out there and, and you know somebody that's lost, then maybe you're, you'll tune in and you'll watch them. And I want to tell you, friend, if I could just, if I could just beseech you with all of my heart, and you say, Brother Bobby, I'm, I'm at the rock bottom. I've got so many needs. Let me tell you something, friend. There's only one place to go, and that place is take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Hallelujah. Victory in Jesus. I love you all in the Lord. Pray for